Hello everyone and welcome back to The Breakdown. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to start a spigot server in Minecraft 1.14 and 1.14.1. 1. The process is the same. You would just change one thing between the two. However, I would always recommend running your servers on the latest version of whatever version you want to run it on. For example, if you want to run a 1.14 server, always run it on 1.14.1 instead of just the base 1.14. Same thing goes for like 1.12 down here. Instead of running it on 1.12, run it on 1.12.2 because you're going to get all the bug fixes without having to worry about, you know, any new features or anything. It's going to have everything you want, including the bug fixes. So in this case, we're going to be using 114.1, even though this will work on 114 and all of that stuff. So first and foremost, though, we do have a mention our sponsor, which is Apex Minecraft Hosting. Go to the first link down below to set up a spigot server in just a few clicks. You see, this is not a 24-hour server. This isn't a server that's up all the time. This server is using your own computer's resources, and it's only meant for your friends and family because it's hosted on your own local IP address. So what that means is that people can get your location, they can take your internet offline, they can do so much stuff, find out where you live, all of that stuff from your IP address. And with Apex Minecraft hosting, you don't have to worry about any of that. We love Apex so much that we actually host our own server on them, play.breakdowncraft.com. So if you're looking for an incredible Minecraft server that you can set up in just five minutes, yep, just five minutes, a few clicks, and your Apex server is up and running, check out Apex Minecraft hosting at the first link down below, the breakdown.xyz slash Apex. Again, you also need a pretty good computer to run a Minecraft server and also play Minecraft. With Apex, if you can play on any server, let's say you can play on our server, play.breakdowncraft.com, you can start a server with Apex and play on it because it's not using your own computer's resources in any other way. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and jump on into setting this spigot server up if you're okay with it being just for your friends and family and hosting it on your own computer. First and foremost, we need to go to the second link down below and that's going to take you here. This is the spigot download page and once you're here, you want to find version 114.1, scroll over and then click the yellow download button or orange, debatable what the color that is, but click the download button on it. It's then going to go ahead and take us off to here where you can see you're about to download spigot 1.14.1.jar. See this right here? Click on this like link. It's another orange link there. Click on that and it will download in the bottom left. Now, if you're on Mozilla Firefox, it's popped up in the screen of the screen. And if you're on Google Chrome, it is in the bottom left. And as long as it starts with spigot and ends in .jar, which ours does, we can keep the file on Google Chrome. On Mozilla Firefox, you'll click save file in the center of the screen. Now we go ahead and minimize our browser. Here on my desktop, I do have the spigot 114.1.jar file here. If this isn't on your desktop, no worries. Go ahead and click on the little Windows icons in the top left for me with the bottom left of your screen, that little Windows icon there, and then type in downloads right like so. You have a downloads file folder in Windows. Click on that, and then you'll find spigot 114.1 here. Drag that to your desktop for ease of use. And once it's on your desktop, we need to right click, create a new folder. You can name this folder whatever you want, but I'm gonna name it play breakdowncraft.com. Why? Because that is the best Minecraft server in the multiverse. Our grief protected survival server, player economy. If you just want an awesome survival server with a friendly community for you and your friends, come play with us on play.breakdowncraft.com. Over 150 players online every single day. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and save that folder by just kind of clicking off of it after we've named it. Then we want to take spigot 114.1.jar and drag that into our play.breakdowncraft.com folder or whatever you named your folder. Once it's in there, you can go ahead and open it up. And in this folder, you'll just have your file. And you might be like, well, what do we do now? Well, we need to right click, create a new text document. So right click, new text document. And then you can just leave this name to new text document. You then want to go ahead and open up the new text document you created. And then in the description of this video, you will find this right here. So all of these, basically it's kind of like a piece of code, right? It's a line of code here. And this is for your server to either be two gigabyte, three gigabyte, four gigabyte. How much RAM do you want to give to your server? Now, you're also going to need some RAM for Minecraft, so you need to keep that in mind before just throwing like eight gigabytes at it if you've only got eight gigabytes of RAM. It's not going to work. So you need to leave enough room for Minecraft and everything. In my case, I'm going to use four gigabytes, but you can probably start with two and then scale up from there if you want. But once you've gotten that code from the description, you're going to copy from Java all the way to pause and then come back over here and paste this. Now, if you're starting a 1.14.1 spigot server, this will work right out the gate. However, if you aren't, you need to come in here and change what it says before the jar file. So for example, we have spigot 114.1. If your file is called spigot 114 or spigot 114.2, whatever it is, you would come over here and change this, right? Just leave .jar and put what it says at the beginning of the file. You might not even have .jar on your file. It might just say spigot 114.1, for example. And if that's the case, just go ahead and move that and put it in here before the .jar part. Nonetheless, once we've done that, we want to go ahead and click File, Save As. And then we can save this as 
a run.bat file. And to do this, what we want to do is file name, change it to run.bat. So we're going to do run.bat, right like so. And then the save type as, this is very important, you need to change save type as to all files. So file name is run.bat, save type as, all files, and then click save. At this point, you'll see a run.bat file pop up over here. And now all we need to do is delete the new text document, right like so, just to keep our server clean, and then double click on the run.bat file. It will now go ahead and start the server, but it'll fail. And the reason it'll fail is because we need to agree to the Minecraft EULA. How do we do that? Well, I'm gonna show you as soon as it loads up here. As you can see, server will start in 20 seconds. So we're gonna do a quick jump cut and then the ULA file will appear. There we go, everything failed out. As you can see, you need to agree to the EULA in order to run the server. So press any key to continue. So that's what we're gonna do, we're gonna press any key. But you do have a ULA.txt file. If you don't, if it didn't run, if you had issues, no worries, we do have a solution for you. Go to the description down below and you need to download this. This is Java Development Kit, specifically the Java SE Development Kit. This is needed to run Minecraft. Minecraft server, but also Minecraft mods, such as Optifine, Forge, anything like that, you need this to be downloaded. And so come here and run this if you did have any issues opening that run.bat file. If you do this and it still doesn't work, you still can't open the run.bat file, well, you need to run the jar fix, which is also linked in the description down below. So go down there and check that out for an incredible, you know, way to fix your jar files. Quick and easy, and it will be good to go. At that point, you'll be able to double click the run.bat file and get the eula.txt. Once you've got it, go ahead and open up the eula.txt by double clicking on it, it should just open up in notepad here. Once you're here, you want to go to this link. And if you're going to go agree to the Minecraft EULA, come here and change EULA equals false to EULA equals true. T-R-U-E, exactly like that. Then go ahead and do file, save. And now you can double click on the run.bat file. At this point, if you have any issues, most likely you just didn't save agreeing to the EULA. So go make sure you did save it and then you'll be good to go. Of course, it is going to take 20 seconds for our server to start up. So let's go ahead and do a quick jump cut until the server is starting. And our server is starting up. As you can see, we now have a loading libraries and it's going through and loading everything everything up and boom, all of these files appear. First time you load your server, it's going to be longer than every consecutive time because of it's loading everything. It's generating your world. All of it is happening right now. And it's kind of a cool thing, right, to have all of this happening. Now, once the server is set up here, you could go play on it in Minecraft using your local IP address. However, if you want your friends to play on it, you're going to need to port forward. Now, port forwarding is scary for some people, but don't worry. We've helped millions of people port forward. I'm going to walk you through every step of the way and make sure you can do it as easily and as efficiently as possible. Get your router login information, everything you need to port forward. We're going to walk you through all of it in this video. However, at this point, if you just want to play on it, you can go type in your local IPv4 address, which I'll show you how to find right now. So let's go ahead and stop our server so we can do this by typing STOP. Now, if you do have this can't keep up, is the server overloaded? You need to add more RAM to your server using that run.bat file earlier. We're going to go ahead and stop the server there. Boom, stopping server, saving, saving. There we go. Press any key to continue. Once you see that, go ahead and do that. Press any key. Now click on the Windows icon. It's in the top left for me, but the bottom left of your screen, that little Windows icon there, click on that and then type in CMD, right like so. Then you'll have this command prompt. Go ahead and click on command prompt and then it'll open up just this black box. It's like, well, this is the server console. It's not the server console. It's random the same sort of thing, but this is a separate thing. And here you want to type in IP, C-O-N-F-I-G, IP, config, and hit enter. Now, at this point, if you want to just play on your server locally with you and maybe your brother and you're on the same Wi-Fi connection, just take your IPv4 address right here, which in my case is 192.168.1.1. Whatever your IPv4 address is, just go type that into Minecraft Multiplayer and you'll be good to go. However, if you want to play with people even across the street, anyone on a different internet connection, whether it's across the street or literally around the world, you'll need to port forward. And we need this information to do that as well. So to port forward here, what we're going to do is take 192.168.1.1 and write that down so we can actually come back here and use that information in our port forward. We're also going to make note of our default gateway. Now, if you have two default gateways, what do you do? Well, you're going to use the one that is a number, in our case, 192.168.1.1. However, your might be different, right? Your number might be different. It might be 174.134.1.5. I don't know, but whatever your default gateway is down here is what you're going to go with. Do not go with the one that has like letters in it and stuff like that. It should only have numbers and it should just be a four number sequence like ours is. Once you've got that, you want to go back to your browser here and then we want to open up a brand spanking new tab. And in this new tab, what we want to do is type in that default gateway. In our case, that was 192.168.1.1. 
It's then going to open up something exactly like this, but most likely completely different from this for you. It's, however, probably going to have a login box. Even if it does just pop up from the top of your browser, it's going to have some sort of a login box. Now, what do you put in this login box? Well, we have an in-depth article linked down below on how to find your router's password, and this is the information that you're going to enter in to the login box here. It goes through five different methods on finding your router's password, and most people find it by method three. So go through all this, get this set up, and it has already helped 86,000 people, so it can help you as well to find your router's password. Once you've got that, go ahead and log in to your router. Now at this point, I do want to remind you that you do not have to port forward with Apex Minecraft hosting, so you can check out Apex the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex. It's a great way to set up a Minecraft server in less than five minutes without having to port forward. You don't have to do any of this. All you have to do is go get a server and you're done. Very, very simple and very, very easy. So go check that out if you're looking for an easy way to set up a server. So here we are logged into the router. So once we're here, this can be a bit intimidating. And because of that, we do have a dedicated video. This goes through all the most popular ways to port forward, or sorry, the most popular routers to port forward. And it goes through all those from AT&T to Verizon to Linksys to Netgear. It's all covered here in depth. So go through this video, which is linked in the description down below, and see if your router is there. Even if it isn't, it's worth a watch because most likely one router there is going to be similar to yours as far as terms and things like that go. However, I'm also going to list off some terms in this video. So for me, port forwarding is in security. Now for you, it might be in apps and gaming. It might be in NAT gaming, NAT gaming. It might be in NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding. It might just be in port forwarding slash port triggering. It might be in port triggering slash port forwarding. It might just be straight up called port forwarding. It might be in advanced, it might be in advanced, advanced. It could also be in the admin settings of your router. Overall though, you're looking for port forwarding and don't be afraid to click anywhere and everywhere on your router. As long as you don't save files unless it's a port forward, you're good to go. You're not gonna mess anything up. And even if you do, you can just reset your router. Perfectly fine, but you're not going to, I promise as long as you just save when you port forward. So once you're here, once you've kind of found what you're looking for, in my case it's in security and then it's in apps and gaming, and then once we're in apps and gaming, we want to click on single port forwarding. Yeah, you heard that right. Apps and gaming, single port forwarding, and then we're finally here. Now once you're here, you want to add a new single port forward. Now the application name is going to be the name that just identifies this port forward. It doesn't mean anything. You could literally make it just random words if you want or let random letters. However, I'm going to do it in Minecraft. That way we know that this port forward is for Minecraft. Now for anything to do with port, external port, internal port, port one, port two, outside port, inside port, first port, second port, anything to do with port. If it has this word right here on it, port, guess what? We're going to put the same number, 25565. Anything to do with port, internal port, guess what? Has the word port 25565. If it has the word port at all, put 25565. For protocol, this is going to be TCP slash UDP or UDP slash TCP or both. In my case, I have both. But if I had TCP slash UDP, I would go with that. Whatever you have, click on it as long as both are selected in some way. For device IP, this is going to be your IPv4 address. In my case, that was 192.168.1.184. However, yours could be completely different. Who knows? Whatever your IPv4 address is, type it in there. Now, most people at this point can save and then click apply and their port forward is done. However, if you do have an outside port listed in your port forward, we are going to show you how to get that now. However, if you're done with port forwarding, if you've been able to save your port forward, if you don't have an outside IP or an external IP, I think I might've said port earlier. What I mean is IP. If you have an external IP, an outside IP, something like that, what that is going to mean is your public IP address. And you'll also need that if you want your friends to play on your server and you've just completed your port forward. So it kind of takes care of two things at once. So what we want to do is go to the link in the description down below. What's my IP address and what's my IP will take you here. Now on my screen, there's a lot of blacked out stuff. You can only see 143 here, right? That's all you can see. The IPv6 is Dress is blacked out, everything over here is blacked out, but this is why it is so important to make sure this is only for your friends and family because as you can see from this, they've gotten your location, they've gotten latitude and longitude coordinates, they've gotten the state you live in, and on top of that, they've gotten your IP address, and using that IP address, they can take you offline, they can do all sorts of stuff as far as like DDoSing you and stuff, so it's very, very important you only give this to people you trust. If you want a public server, you want to be able to give to everybody, Apex Minecraft hosting is the way to go. However, once we're here, we're going to go ahead and copy this IP address. Now, as you can see, 143 is the last three digits of mine. 
we're going to carry that through. I'm going to show you that that's what we use later in the video. However, once you've copied that, we can now come back over to our router. And if you needed an outside IP or an external IP, go ahead and paste that in here and then go ahead and save and apply your port forward. Otherwise, we can minimize our browser and open up Minecraft. Once we minimize our browser, we are back on the desktop where we want to go ahead and do one more thing before we commit to opening our server. So what we want to do is go into our server.properties file here. You see this server.properties. I can double click on it and it's going to open with notepad. If you double click on it, which is what you need to do, it's going to ask you where to open it. Select notepad. Once you're in here, you'll be able to find the server-ip. We're going to take our IPv4 address from over here and put it next to server-ip. In my case, 192.168.1.184, right like so. Now we're going to go ahead and do file save on the server properties file and we can double click on the run.bat file. I'm also going to go ahead and open up Minecraft at this point. We are in 1.14.1 here. So you just wanna make sure that we're selecting the latest release and click play. Now, you might need to select an older version or whatever if 1.14.2 comes out. There's all talk about that right now and it'll probably be out very, very soon. But nevertheless, we're gonna go ahead and open this up. As you can see, still taking 20 seconds to start our server over here. But once that's live, we'll be able to join right on in, which hopefully it'll be right about the time we get into the Minecraft main menu. As you can see, it is loading libraries, which is what we like to see. So once we're on the Minecraft main menu, we'll be able to click on multiplayer and then join on in the server. So we click on multiplayer here. We can see play.breakdowncraft.com. What is that? Oh, an incredible player-based economy, grief-protected survival server that you and your friends need to come play on. It is absolutely incredible. However, we can see preparing spawn area over here and there we go. Server is done starting. We can go ahead and click direct connect and once we do that, we can paste our public IP address right in here. Again, all you can see is the last three digits of this 143, same as earlier, and then we can go ahead and click join server. Once you click join server, it'll launch on in and you'll see it pop up over here. This is the same IP address your friends are going to get for your server as well. So let's go ahead and click join server. So there we have connecting the server. It'll then log on in and boom, there we go. We are now online and in the server, you can see Nix Games has joined over here. Now, once you're in game, there's a few things you probably wanna do to start off. And the first is op yourself. So come over here to the CMD, the command prompt and type op Nix Games or whatever your username is and hit enter. And then now in game, I can go ahead and do things like game mode creative and all sorts of cool stuff. Now. You're also probably gonna to wanna to install some plugins on your server, right? And to do that, you can check out the I at the top of your screen, which will show you exactly how you can install plugins on your Minecraft 1.14 Spigot server. It goes through everything. It even shows you where to find plugins, giving you a list of the top five best plugins. It is incredible, so go check it out at the link in the description down below. Nevertheless, what if your server is not working? What if you have issues? Well, first and foremost, you might have an issue where you can't join your server off your public IP, but your friends can. All you need to do is just join off of your IPv4 address and problem solved. Now, if your friends can't join the server, but you can, that means there's probably an issue with your port forward or there is an antivirus either on your computer or on your router. It could be a firewall on your router or on your computer blocking the connection. Usually this is going to be on your router, but sometimes antiviruses really don't like Minecraft servers on your computer and you could check that as well. Windows Defender can also be an issue occasionally, but not often, so you might wanna check that. If after all that, it's still not working, it's most likely a port forward issue. So go check your port forward, make sure that's all the same. And occasionally your IPv4 address does change and that will need to be updated in your port forward. Nevertheless, if you have any questions, please let us know in the comment section down below. We'll try our best to help you out. And be sure to come play with us on play.breakdowncraft.com, the best Minecraft server in the multiverse, custom skyblock, custom grief protected survival, quest, player economy, absolutely amazing. You will love it. So again, come play with us, play.breakdowncraft.com. Anyway, everyone, my name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown. Thank you so much for watching. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more awesome content, and I'm out. Peace.